Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a very exciting reading guide because I'm going to be doing one for who I consider to be my favorite author, Taylor Jenkins Reid. Very excited to be doing another reading guide. I actually have done two reading guides before. I did one for Christina Lauren a while ago and then I just did one last month for Riley Sager. But with that being said, I have not liked every single book from Taylor Jenkins Reid. I mean, I don't think there's an author in this world who I've enjoyed every single book from. Like that just doesn't usually happen for me. And so in this reading guide, I'm going to be telling you about her seven published novels and her one published novella, giving you a little synopsis on each of them, letting you know what they're about. I'm also going to be ranking my favorites. I'm going to be letting you know about like the most unique book or the, her hidden gem that I think more people should check out. I'm going to discuss my favorite romances in all of her books, the book that made me cry the most, my favorite protagonist and my least favorite protagonist, my top five favorite characters, my most memorable side characters, where I think you should start. Also, I'm going to do more of if you like this I think you should check this out and I think if you like this author you should try this. I'm also going to be doing again a Taylor Swift song that that fits each one of these books because why not? That just seems like a really fun thing to do. And then lastly I'm going to be going over some of her book to movie news that has been announced recently or at least book adaptation news surrounding her books. It's exciting stuff! Alright, so to start this off, I'm just going to go over all the seven books and one novella that she currently has published and let you know their star ratings on Goodreads, what they're about, etc. So her very first novel was Forever Interrupted. This was published in 2013 and on Goodreads it averages a 3.77 rating out of 5, but it only has 20,000 reviews. This one actually ties for her lowest rated book overall for like the average rating, but it's also her least read book because 20,000 ratings is the least amount of ratings that she's had on any of her books, even including the novella. Like even the novella has more reads than this one does. This one is about this 20 something year old woman named Elsie who meets this guy named Ben when she's going to pick up her pizza order at a pizza restaurant and they fall like mad in love head over heels. By six months later, they're already married and the nine days after they get married, Ben gets hit by a car and dies. And so you're kind of dealing with Elsie as she's dealing with this whirlwind of, you know, this romance that happened in the last six months of her life and now her husband is dead and they've only been married for nine days. Her second published novel is After I Do. This one came out in 2014 and I do own a copy of this book, but I'm currently lending it to my mom. This book averages a 4.0 out of 5 on Goodreads and it's been rated by 32,000 people. And in this story, we're following this married couple who's been married for about like 9 or 10 years, I want to say, and they're just feeling like they might be on the brink of divorce. Like they don't know if they want to do this anymore. They feel like they might be falling out of love with each other. They decide to take one year apart during their marriage and they're not going to make any like sudden things. Like they're not going to get divorced right away. They're just going to take a year apart and see if they can live without each other and how life looks without each other. Next published book was maybe in Another Life. This one published in 2015. This one averages a 3.77 out of 5 on Goodreads, which is tied for her lowest rated book with Forever Interrupted. And it's been rated by 62,000 people. So this one definitely has been read by a lot more people than the other two books. And in this book, we're following this woman named Hannah who is going out on the town with one of her friends and she sees her first love, Ethan, at this party. And her friend is like, okay, let's go. And she has to decide if she wants to go back with her friend or if she wants to go and like hang out with her first love again. Again. And so in this book, we follow the alternate timelines of each decision. So we get to see how her life would have been different if she went home with her first love versus how her life would have been different if she went home with her best friend. And that's personally one of my favorite things to explore in books is the idea of alternate realities and seeing how your life would be different based on one decision. Her next published book was One True Loves. This one came out in 2016. It averages a 4.03 out of 5 on Goodreads and it's been rated by 51,000 people. And in this book, we're following this woman named Emma who she finds out that her husband has died in this helicopter crash. And so we follow her as she's grieving for the next four years. And then she meets this guy, Sam, that she used to go to school with and they really hit it off. They're engaged. Things are looking well for them. And then she gets a phone call saying that her husband had actually survived the helicopter crash and he's been living alone in the wilderness for like a very long time. And he's coming back now. And it's been like four years. Like she's moved on with her life. She's engaged to a new guy. Her next published book was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. This book published in 2017. And this 
this averages a 4.44 out of 5 on Goodreads. This is her highest rated book to date and it's her most read and rated book to date because this book has been read and rated by 524,000 people. This was her first attempt at a historical fiction novel. This novel follows Evelyn Hugo who is this iconic Hollywood actress in the 1950s all the way to like the early 2000s or so I want to say. We follow her as we see like behind the scenes of what her life was actually like because she was portrayed in the media a certain way but we get to know the true story of what happened on her life where she had these seven husbands. We do get Evelyn's point of view in this book but we also do follow from the reporter named Monique who has been chosen specifically by Evelyn to tell her story and so we do follow Mon Monique's perspective in this book as well as she's the journalist who's going to be telling Evelyn's story. The next book she published was her novella. It came out in 2018 and it's called Evidence of the Affair. It has a 3.91 average out of 5 on Goodreads and it's been rated by 28,000 people which is a lot considering that I'm pretty sure this book was only available to Amazon Prime members at least at the beginning when it first became available. I don't know if that's still true. This book it's been a couple years since I read this so I'm a little foggy on it but from what I remember it takes place in the 70s I'm pretty sure and it takes place in the same world as Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and it's following these two people who are having affairs but they're not having an affair with each other they're just having affairs and they're writing each other letters back and forth and this entire story it's a short story but it's all told in letter format so we just get the letters that they sent back and forth to each other about like confessing what they're doing and like the affairs that they're having. Next published book was Daisy Jones and the six. This book came out in 2019 and this one averages a 4.22 out of five and it's been rated and read by 416,000 people. This one is by far her second most well-known book after Evelyn Hugo. And in this book we're following this woman named Daisy Jones who joins with this band called the six and we kind of follow their journey through like you know the rock band era of the 70s. This is very this feels very like Fleetwood Mac inspired you know it has that kind of vibe for sure and also also, this entire book is told in interview format. So literally none of this book is told in a conventional way. Every single part of this book is told in interview style. So you just get somebody like interviewing them and then them responding in like different paragraphs and stuff. So it's a very unique writing style for a story like this. And then lastly, her most recent published book is Malibu Rising. This just came out in the summer of 2021. And as of right now, it's averaging a 4.14 out of 5 on Goodreads. And it's already been rated and reviewed by 180,000 people, which is wild considering this book has only been out for a few months. And this novel takes place in Malibu in the 1980s and we're following these four siblings. Their father of the four siblings is actually Mick Riva who is one of the husbands in Evelyn Hugo but this isn't a sequel by any means. I mean this can totally be read as a standalone but it's really cool if you already know the like Taylor Jenkins Reid universe you'll recognize Mick Riva as one of Evelyn's husbands from this book. But anyways in this book we're following Mick's four grown adult children as they're having Having one of the biggest parties of the year in their house in in Malibu and we also do get flashbacks of their childhood and how they grew up. It's a story about this family and there's a lot of beachy vibes and yeah. So yeah these are all of the books that Taylor Jenkins Reid has published so far. I've heard that her next book that she's working on is also going to be a historical fiction that takes place in the same universe as Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones. So that's exciting because I really do love this universe that she's created. So now to rank them from my favorite to least favorite. I'm going to start with my favorite because I don't think it come as a surprise to anybody that Evelyn Hugo is my favorite. <laughs> God, this book is literally, its it might be my favorite book of all time. Like, it's definitely my top three favorite books of all time. And, I mean, this book is included in my, like, channel intro, you know? It's, like, one of the books that are on my head. Like, this is, this is top tier, god tier for me. I praise this book over and over and over again on my channel, so you're probably just, like, shut up about this book already. My god, Evelyn Hugo is just one of my favorite books that I've ever read. I just love Evelyn's character so much, and I love that she's not perfect. I love that she's a very flawed and very complex character. There will be times in this book where you're rooting for her and you're just like, what are you doing? Like, she's frustrating, but she, it just makes her feel more real to me. I also just love all of the characters in this book. I feel like they're all so fleshed out. I just love the old Hollywood vibes. Just everything about this book is chef's kiss, and if you haven't read it yet, I'm not sure what more I can say to convince you to read this book. Second favorite may come as a surprise because my second favorite is maybe in another life. This book 
I think is one of my all-time favorites because of the fact that it explores alternate realities and you know like I said that's like one of my favorite things to think about in books and to discuss because so often I will think like how every decision that I make on a daily basis might affect things in my life you know and it's like in this book it's kind of a big decision you know because it's like is she gonna go and be with her you know first love or is she gonna go home with her best friend and maybe not speak to him again so that's kind of like a big decision but even like the little decisions that we make in our day-to-day -day lives it's just so interesting to think like if I had made a different decision how would my life look different and I love that this book explores that the ending of this book just gave me chills like all over my body like I just loved the ending and where this book went and I don't know I just thought this was such a stunning piece of work I love it so much my third favorite is probably gonna be one true loves and I think this is one of my favorite love triangles that I've ever read in a book because I genuinely felt so much for both of these men and I understood where both of them were coming from and I just think it was a really sticky situation for these characters to be in in the first place you know like because I can't imagine what I would do in this situation and it's like yeah even though you've grieved and moved on from being with your husband that doesn't mean that love for him still isn't there you know like it's almost like you would kill for the chance to be with him again because you lost him and you know I just can't imagine the kind of grief that this character went through after losing her husband and then to be able to move on and find love again and for him to come back like it just must be like the worst situation. And I love to talk about grief in this book and how grief can change you so like you're not really the same person that you were anymore when you were with you know the first husband that you were with you know my next favorite is going to be after I do this is another one that is just it's absolutely heartbreaking but there's just something about it like it's, I just really enjoy it I really like the discussion in this book about marriage and how marriage is all about compromise and it's wild because I don't even know if I'm somebody that wants or even cares that much about marriage, but I just really appreciated the discussion in this book. I really loved the characters. I felt like their confrontations and their problems were very real problems, you know? Like they were just like little everyday things that build up until they're big things. And I just loved the way that this book was written. I just thought it was really well done. My next favorite is going to be Evidence of the Affair because even though this book is just a little novella, I think it's a really interesting story and I loved the style of the way this story was told. I love that it's told in like letter format and that we just get to see these letters going back and forth and the tension just kind of builds as the story goes and you know like I said it has been a few years since I've read this book so I don't remember like every little detail about it but from what I do remember I just remember really enjoying this and thinking it was so well written and so well done and it made me care about the characters in that short length of time that this book is. My next favorite was Daisy Jones and the Six. I have a love-hate relationship with this book because the first time that I attempted to read this book I actually had had an arc of it and I DNF'd it like I could not sit sit here and try to read this book it was just so boring to me but then when I checked out the audiobook I thought the audiobook was so fantastic because the audiobook has a full cast and it's just really engaging and really immersive and I would highly highly recommend the audiobook over reading this book physically because I don't know dude reading this book physically was just not my thing so I feel like because of that I kind of have a love hate with this one like I really enjoyed the audiobook once I got into it but it was a struggle for me to get into this book at the start but also Daisy Jones is a pretty iconic character like I can really see why people think she's so freaking cool i mean she's not as like up there for me as like evelyn hugo you know but she's definitely like a cool badass bitch from the 70s we love it my next favorite is going to be malibu rising this was a book that i feel so torn about even still even though i read it this summer I still feel pretty lukewarm about this one and I feel like I don't really understand the hype because I feel like a lot of people are hyping this up and you know almost saying it's like as good as Evelyn Hugo and I just don't think that's the case at least for me personally. I will say though I really loved the main protagonist Nina in this book. I really did love her and then I also loved the younger sister Kit. She's actually one of my favorite side characters that I've read about in a Taylor Jenkins read book so there were some really great moments in this story and I love that it takes place in Malibu in California because if you didn't know I'm originally from California so it made me feel very nostalgic and it was just really beautiful for that reason and then lastly in last place we have the one Taylor Jenkins read book that I really don't like and that's forever interrupted which you know granted this is her debut book you know so of course her writing might not have been the best for her first book I mean I'll cut her some slack but this book to me like I don't know I just could not connect with these characters honestly this read a lot like a fan fiction to me it just didn't 
have that spark that I'm used to with Taylor Jenkins read books and this was not the first book that I read from her. I actually read this book after I had already read a few of her other backlist titles. I'm pretty sure the first Taylor Jenkins read book that I ever read was One True Loves and then I got into Maybe in Another Life and After I Do and then I read this one. Yeah this book was just not it for me dude. I just didn't mm, no. I just didn't vibe with this writing style. The main character drove me nuts. All right next I wanted to go over the book that I think is her most unique story and her hidden gem and I'm sure you're not gonna be too surprised to know that I think it's maybe in another life even though I know you're like wait you just said this book has been read by twice the amount of people that these two have been read but also I feel like this one's a hidden gem because it's literally rated as low as forever interrupted like these two are tied for her lowest rated books and that is something that I just don't understand personally because this is one of my absolute favorite books from Taylor Jenkins read I think this book is such a interesting thought-provoking book and you know I mean like I said if you've ever been interested in the idea of exploring books that have like alternate realities or exploring a character making one decision and then seeing how her life would have been different if she did the other decision like I just think if you're interested at all in that then I would definitely check this book out and give it a chance like the writing might not be for everyone I just think it's so good it's so underrated like what the heck next is going to be my favorite romance that I've ever read about in a Taylor Jenkins read book and like do I even have to say um, Evelyn and this person? I don't want to give away, you know, who she ends up with in this book because, you know, the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo probably implies that there's a lot of romance happening in this book. Yeah, the romance in this book is one of my freaking god tier favorite romances that I've ever read about in a book and this is definitely a romance that I live for. Like, I've read this book like two or three times now. And every time I just like die, I melt over this romance. I just adore these two together so much. But another one of my favorite romances in a Taylor Jenkins read book is One True Loves. I feel like this one is the closest to something that Colleen Hoover might have written or something like that. You know, it's just very beautiful, very romantic. And I actually cared about this love triangle that was happening in this book. There was also a pretty good romance in Daisy Jones and the Six. Not gonna lie. And then for a book that made me cry the most, like the book that I cried the most over out of all of her books is once again, Evelyn Hugo. I know I sound like a broken record, but this book is my favorite for a reason, okay? This book made me ball my eyes out at the end of this book. I could not even breathe. It's just one of those books, you know? It's one of those books that'll hit you right in the jugular and just like, oof, it hurts. It hurts. The ending of this book hurts. I also think After I Do is one that made me pretty emotional just because I really cared about these two characters and seeing them, you know, deal with like not wanting their marriage anymore and not knowing what they wanted anymore was really sad for me. I don't know what it was about this book, but it just made me really emotional. I feel like in Forever Interrupted, she really desperately wanted Wants you to cry over this book but for me personally like I did not find this book to be emotional at all but I know for some people this will probably be the one that makes them cry the most maybe like I don't know for my favorite protagonist and my least favorite protagonist I mean I'm sure you saw this coming Evelyn is my favorite protagonist to read about but I also really do love Daisy as a protagonist I just find her to be another one of those standout characters that's just really interesting and really like drilled into my brain you know because like Daisy is not a character that I'll forget anytime soon but I do think Evelyn is more strong in my mind as a protagonist because of the way that this book was written. I feel like because this book was written in interview style, it it almost made it more difficult to connect to these characters because I feel like I never got to be inside of their head. I was only reading their statements in like interviews, you know? But at the same time, like Daisy still is a character that really stands out to me from her books. And of course, my least favorite protagonist that I've read about so far is Elsie in Forever Interrupted. I mean, like I just said, she made me frustrated at times reading this book. I was like, girl, what you doing? And then I thought it'd be fun to do also like most memorable side characters for me because I do think Harry from Evelyn Hugo is like my favorite side character that I've read about in one of her books. But also Hannah's best friend in this book, her name is actually Gabby, which has nothing to do with it by the way but I just really enjoyed Gabby's character in this book. She's definitely one of my favorite side characters. I also really enjoyed Billy from Daisy Jones and the Six. He's definitely one of those characters that stands out to me as well as Kit 
from Malibu Rising. You know, like I said, Nina's younger sister. She's definitely one of my favorite characters that I've read from Taylor Jenkins Reid. So the next question would be like, where should you start with her books? You know, obviously I think your best bet is just to start with whichever book you think sounds the most interesting to you personally. But if I had to recommend one for you to start with, it would probably be Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones just because these are her most popular books, her most talked about books. And this will definitely give you a taste for her style. I do think if you're going to go with Daisy Jones though, I would highly recommend the audiobook over reading the book physically just because this writing style is so dense and it's not gonna work for everyone, but you know, hey, maybe it will work for you, I don't know. If you're looking for something that's like not a historical fiction experience, then I would probably recommend starting with One True Loves just because this is the one that I started with personally and this is the one that got me immediately hooked into her as an author and wanting to read every single book she's ever published. All right, and now onto the fun stuff because I wanted to do a Taylor Swift song to go with every single one of these books because I thought it'd be really fun to do. Also, both of their first names are Taylor, so like that's pretty cool. I see in every single one of Taylor Jenkins Reid, every time she does like a Q&A on Instagram, people will ask her if like, oh, do you think Taylor Swift has read your books? Because some of these songs feel so inspired by your stories, especially Evelyn Hugo. And it's so funny because she'll always say like, hey, I'm a huge fan of Taylor Swift and I love Taylor Swift, but I have no idea if she's like read my books or if she cares or like whatever. It's just like the most entertaining shit to me. And I'm glad that other people pick up on the fact that Taylor Swift songs sound like they've been written about some of her books, like holy shit. But anyways, let's get to it. We're gonna start with Forever Interrupted and um, I'm sad to say that one of my all-time favorite Taylor Swift songs actually does describe this book very well. I'm only sad about it because this is my least favorite Taylor Jenkins read. <laughs> but for Forever Interrupted, I picked This Is Me Trying because it does accurately represent the things that are happening in this book. The next one is gonna be One True Loves and I feel like the song The One fits this one pretty perfectly because it's almost like, is there only one person for us, you know? Or is there po is there the possibility that you could have one true loves, like plural? But we were something, don't you think so? Roaring twins, tossing pennies in the pool, it would have been you. Next up, I chose Maybe in Another Life and the song I chose for that is Long Story Short. I almost feel like the song is saying like if you had made one different decision like oh it was the wrong guy or it was the wrong time but now I figured it out you know like I figured out what I want and what I need in life. And I fell from the pedestal right down the rabbit hole long story short it was a bad time. Next book is After I Do and a song that I think fits this book really well like so well to the point where it can make me cry if I really think about it too hard is Happiness because holy shit is this song not about a, you know, a marriage failing, you know, a pending divorce. Like this song is literally written about this scenario. But now I'm right down in it. All the years I've given is just shit we're dividing up. There'll be happiness after you. There was happiness because of you. Oh my god, that song hits me. Haunted by the look in my eyes that would have loved you for a lifetime. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Next, I think um, Daisy Jones and the Six. I think the song Mirrorball actually fits this book so perfectly because Daisy Jones can be like, you know, I feel like this song is almost written about what it's like to be a celebrity and you know, like everybody expects you to be a certain way and everybody perceives you in a certain way. And so it's like, I'm a mirror ball. Like I reflect what you want to see. When I actually did my video for a book for every song on Folklore, this was actually the book that I picked for the song Mirrorball, just because I think it fits so well. I'm still trying everything to keep you laughing at me because I'm a mirrorball. This next one's kind of a joke, but I feel like Malibu Rising, the song This Is Why We Can't Have Nice Things, just reminds me so much of this book. And I think that's mostly because of the fact that this book mainly does revolve around this huge party that's happening in Malibu in their mansion and this party feels very you know Gatsby. It was so nice throwing big parties feeling so Gatsby for that whole year. All right and I saved Evelyn Hugo for last because I feel like there are so many Taylor Swift songs that I could pick. I mean literally if you go back and watch all the videos that I've done of like picking a book for every Taylor Swift song on each one of her albums I'm pretty sure I featured Evelyn Hugo in every single one of those videos because there's always at least one if not multiple Taylor Swift songs per album album that I think could perfectly describe this book and it feels like it was inspired and written about this book. 
The main one that I'm choosing though is dress because I mean, come on, Evelyn Hugo is known for her iconic dress. And it just seems so fitting because it's like, I only bought this dress so you could take it off. And how like, the whole world thinks that they know, but nobody actually knows about us vibes. They got no idea about me and you. I only bought this dress so you could take it off. I also do think though that Gold Rush fits this book so perfectly. I mean, come on. Everybody wants you. Everybody wonders what it would be like to love you. What must it be like to grow up that beautiful? So the next part of this video is going to be like, if you enjoy this book, then I think you should check out this, whether it's a book or a TV show or a movie. It's like something that I just think gives me similar vibes to that thing. I think if you enjoyed Malibu Rising, then I think you should definitely check out Little Fires everywhere. Not only does this book also follow, you know, like these four siblings and it just has like a very similar thing, but it also kind of starts the same way because both of these books are like, it started with the fire and whatever. And then you kind of like figure out what happens in these stories leading up to this fire. That was like the thing that happened in both of these books. And I don't know, they're both just like very similar in the fact that they're both family dramas. You know, they're both written very well. I mean, I would argue that I think Little Fires Everywhere is written a lot better. Per for me personally than Malibu Rising. And this one definitely has more of like, you know, the small town vibes. I think this one actually takes place in the 90s in Cleveland. And then this one, you know, is Malibu in the 80s. So there is like a slight difference in the vibes there. But I think overall these stories are pretty similar. I also feel like if you liked Malibu Rising because of the, you know, family drama, like if that's your thing, then I would definitely check out Ask Again Yes or We Are the Brennans is one that I just read that is also very like family drama vibes. I also haven't read this book yet, but I feel like the most fun we ever had is another family drama that would fit in to this kind of vibe if that's what you're looking for. And next up, if you enjoyed Daisy Jones and the Six, then I would highly recommend The Final Revival of Opal and Nev. These books are literally so similar. They both follow bands that are in the 1970s and it's written in like interview style format. So it's also like in this book, this is only told through like articles and interviews and things like that. So it's not a conventional storytelling style, just like Daisy. And the themes in this book are similar. They both have the like 70s rock music vibes. And also, I do think Opal and Nev, in my opinion, is even better because I feel like in Daisy Jones, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, feminism and being a, a woman in rock music. But then in Opal and Nev, there's also the discussion of being a woman of color in rock music. And so I feel like there's a little bit more discussion and politics involved in Opal and Nev, which I personally liked a little bit more. Whereas Daisy Jones and the Six is more of a like, you know, it's a lighthearted, less political version of that. But I don't know, I thought both of these were really good and they just reminded me a lot of each other. And next, I think if you enjoyed the book After I Do, then I would highly recommend checking out the movie Blue Valentine. Blue Valentine is like one of my favorite movies ever, but I just feel like they're very similar in concept and style because Blue Valentine is also about this couple who is probably going to get divorced. Like they are just falling out of love with each other and it's really hard. But the tragic thing about watching Blue Valentine is that we get two timelines in Blue Valentine and we jump back and forth between when they were first getting together, like when they met and like the beginning of their relationship. And then four years later, we see them as they're starting to fall apart in their relationship. And both of these stories are just so depressing, but also so good. Like the acting in Blue Valentine is just so good. It's literally one of those movies that makes my stomach hurt because of how sad it makes me, but it's also just so beautiful and so well done. I also think you'd probably probably like that one movie, A Marriage Story, the one with Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver. I feel like that's another movie that also does this like, you know, a marriage is coming to an end and it's really freaking hard and really freaking sad. This book definitely gave me the same kind of vibe and energy as those two movies did for sure. I personally prefer Blue Valentine over A Marriage Story just because Blue Valentine has two of my favorite actors, Michelle Williams and Ryan Gosling, and I think they do a fantastic job. But either way, I think both movies are good. The book is good. It's amazing. And then lastly, I think if you enjoyed Maybe in Another Life, I think you should check out The Dream Daughter just because this is another one of those books that's like, this one's actually like historical fiction and this one deals with time travel. I think it just reminds me of this book because this book just has that something extra, you know, it has that like alternate realities kind of storyline happening. And I feel like that's also kind of explored in The Dream Daughter, but this one is more a sense where there's like time traveling, but it's also just like a really moving mother and daughter story. And so I feel like they have similar vibes, but if you're looking for something else that specifically deals with alternate realities, that's like more on the sci-fi side, I would definitely recommend Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. 
Dark Matter is a book that is just wild. It's a sci-fi novel that's about this man that wakes up in a world where his wife is no longer his wife and his son was never born. And it's kind of showing like his decisions and how his decisions have greatly affected his life and everything. It's a really interesting book. It's one of my favorites. And then a movie that kind of reminds me of this concept is Mr. Nobody. It's the movie that has Jared Leto in it. And I feel like that's another really great movie that shows like alternate realities of one decision that you can make in your life. In the movie, it's that he has to decide, like his parents are getting divorced and he has to decide if he wants to live with his mom or his dad more full time because they're like moving across the country from each other. And we get to see how his life would be different if he went and lived with his mom versus if he lived with his dad. So it's a really, really interesting movie. And I just think if you like the concept in this book, you should definitely check out that film because wow. All right and then the next section is that if you like Taylor Jenkins Reid I think you should check out these authors as well because they either have similar writing styles or similar vibes. My main recommendation would be to check out Kristen Hanna because if you're really interested in Taylor Jenkins Reid's style of storytelling for historical fiction and you think she has really strong and amazing characters then I would definitely check out uh, Kristen Hanna especially some of her newer releases like The Great Alone and The Four Winds. I mean The Nightingale I would still highly recommend but I feel like this one's a little bit different from her because it's historical fiction but it's taking place during world, world war ii so it's very historical this one takes place around like 1950 1960s and then this one takes place in the 1970s so i feel like these ones are a little bit more closer to the time periods where taylor jenkins reed writes in those time periods and these books are just so stunning they have really great characters really great stories and i would just highly recommend this author another author who i think writes really great historical fiction is Britt bennett um this one's her book the vanishing half and she also does have the mother's and I'm not sure if she has any other ones, but I've read this one and The Mothers, and I do think that she also writes really great moving historical fiction that follows families very closely. I did mention Celeste Ng earlier, but I do think Celeste Ng is another author that I would recommend checking out because she does have a very like lyrical prose, you know, like she has a really great writing style. And also, I would recommend checking out Jennifer Weiner, and in particular, uh, this book, Miss Everything, because this one's a really powerful historical fiction novel that follows these two sisters, and it's this family drama kind of book and I just think if you enjoy Taylor Jenkins read you'll probably enjoy her as well. The last section of this video is going to be book adaptation news because I feel like especially in the last year there's been a lot of adaptation news about some of her books. The first one that I wanted to tell you about I don't know if this is still happening but Forever Interrupted is currently being adapted and Dakota Johnson has been signed on to be the lead and to play Elsie in this. But as far as I know, like this has been announced, but I don't think that they have made any other announcements on this for a very long time. I found out about this, I'm pretty sure like two or three years ago that they were adapting this. So I don't know if this is currently still happening or not, but it is still available to see on IMDb. Like you can still see it up there. You can see that Dakota Johnson is still cast in it, but I don't know if this is actually happening or if they're putting this one on pause for now. But then her book, One True Loves, um, it has been fully cast and it's been announced that this is gonna release next year in 2022. It has three actors cast in it so far and they've cast the main girl and the two love interests in this book. One of the guys that's going to be in this book is the guy that's in that new Marvel movie Shang-Chi and then the other guy that's going to be in this is the guy that's like the love interest in that movie Holiday that I saw last year that was super cute. And then the girl that got casted in this I'm not totally sure what I've seen her in but she looks super familiar so I'm really excited with this cast and I'm so excited to see this adapted. I think it's going to be really great. And then Daisy Jones and the Six is probably the farthest along as far as getting the adaptation out. It even says that it's supposed to come out this year, but I feel like it's probably not going to end up coming out this year. It'll probably be sometime next year, but this is going to be a 12 episode mini series that's coming to Amazon Prime. It's actually going to be um, produced by Reese Witherspoon's team, and this has been fully cast already, and Riley Keough I think that's how you say it, Riley Keough. She's been cast to play Daisy. She's actually Elvis Presley's granddaughter. So like, that's pretty cool. There's a lot of well-known actors in this cast. I'm pretty sure like Sam, Sam Claffin is his name or what's his name? Sam Claffin, I think. He's cast as Billy in this. And so I'm just, I'm really curious to see this. I feel like this is gonna be so good, especially because it's being produced by Reese Witherspoon's team. Like I just have a good feeling about it. And to be fair, I do think this would work a lot better as a you know tv show or movie i think it would be a lot more interesting and then evelyn hugo is currently being adapted there's been a lot of different things coming out recently though because this was originally picked up by freeform and i think this was like a couple years ago and i know like for me personally i was kind of upset that it got picked up by freeform because i don't usually like things that come out in freeform like they're just like not my favorite but then taylor jenkins reed confirmed over the summer in june she said the adaptation is no longer happening at freeform but on another 
their platform and that I feel really good with the direction that it's going in. And so that's pretty much all we know about it at this point. We know that it's still an adaptation, it's still happening, but it's no longer going to be happening on Freeform. So we don't really know what platform is going to pick it up yet. I mean, God, I'm hoping and praying to the gods that it gets picked up by like Netflix or HBO or even Amazon, like anything would like that would do a good job with it. That would be so cool. I don't know. I'm just so nervous to see like who gets cast in this. I'm nervous to see like if they're going to be able to do this book justice. I'm just nervous all around, but also very excited that this story is going to get out there for more people. And then lastly, Malibu Rising has already been announced that it's going to be getting adapted. It was recently just bought by Hulu and they're going to be making this a limited series and it's going to be from the same producers and writers of Little Fires Everywhere, which you know is again ironic because of how much these two books reminded me of each other. So it would make sense that the producers would see this as something that they would want to adapt. There's been no casting or any other announcements yet on like when it's going to be happening, but it has has officially been announced and I'm just like so excited about it. I do think this would also make for a really great limited series. I'm so great to see what they do with these characters. All right, so that pretty much concludes my Taylor Jenkins Reid reading guide. I'm sorry this video is probably so long, ah! But I just have so much to say. You know, she's definitely one of my favorite authors, if not my favorite author. I mean, I do consider her to be my favorite author in terms of like, you know, contemporary historical fiction kind of books. But then Riley Sager is probably my favorite thriller author. What I wouldn't give for Taylor Jenkins Reid to write a thriller or a horror book. Like, oh my god, I would just, I would just die. Yeah, that is all of the things for this video. I'll stop talking now. And please let me know, um, you know, if you've read any of Taylor's books, let me know which ones you've enjoyed the most. If you've disliked any, let me know that as well. If you are still planning to read any of her books, let me know. If I've encouraged you to read any of her books in some way, please let me know because I love to know that. And yeah, thank you so much for watching as always. If there's any other authors that you'd like to see me do this kind of video for in the future, then let me know. I'm not too sure who else I'd plan to do in the future. I mean, maybe one for Colleen Hoover, but it's been so long since I've read some of the OG Colleen Hoover books that I feel like I don't even know if I feel the same about them anymore. So maybe I'd have to like, I'd have to reread, you know, a few Colleen Hoovers before I would do a video like that. But if there's any other authors that you would like to see, or if you would like to see Colleen Hoover, then let me know. And thank you so much for watching as always, and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye. This one can't have nice things. I'm doing good on some new shit I don't like that falling Feels like flying till the bone crush Ways that the shoe fits Walking it till your high heels break Damn, I need it, everything just stops Because you break them I have to take them away Haunted by the look in my eyes I would've loved you for a lifetime I've never been a natural All I do is try, try, try But this is what you can't have Nice things If you would've been the one <laughs> I'm not gonna cry right now